Morning guys, welcome to another episode of MC Commute. You know the deal. Today we're riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on Kawasaki's new 2019 W800. So let's throw on the helmet and go for a ride. There she is guys, Kawasaki's 2019 W800. Another retro inspired motorcycle from Kawasaki Heavy Industries. Look at this bike, I mean it's obvious how good looking it is i mean look at that that cafe racer front end those low slung bars look how lean it is and how well proportioned everything is from the fuel tank to the engine to the to the rear suspension the seat the front end very well proportioned and well put together motorcycle love that led headlight the keys on right now so you can see it glimmering here in the light a very very good looking motorcycle from Kawasaki. Sounds pretty sweet. Let's hit the road. All right, Kawasaki's 2019 W800. This is the third retro inspired motorcycle from Kawasaki. First is the Z900 RS and then the Z900 Cafe. This is the third one. You might be wondering why is Kawasaki on this retro crusade? All of these retro bikes, what's going on? Well, the reason behind it is that they're selling them. Kawasaki brought in right over a thousand Z900 RS and Cafe bikes together into America last year for 2018. They sold them all. They sold so many, many of them that they actually had to ask the parent company in Japan for more models just to fulfill demand. So, as they say, you want to strike while the iron is hot. And that's what Kawasaki's doing by introducing yet another retro inspired motorcycle. Now, this this W800 has a really neat story. Back in the day, got a little road construction here. We're going to take a little detour, guys. Pardon me. Pardon me not following the MC commute route. We have, a, we have to take a detour due to road construction. Hopefully no one will be too upset about it in the comments section. So back to the story of the W800 and its predecessor, the W650. So back in the mid-60s, 1966 to be exact, Kawasaki opened up shop in the United States, 1966 to be exact. And they opened up shop with a very special motorcycle called the Kawasaki W1. And the Kawasaki W1 was their first four-stroke powered big displacement street bike. So up until then, you know, the American motorcycle manufacturers and the, the English motorcycle manufacturers, they had big displacement four-stroke four -stroke engines, but the Japanese didn't. They were making two-stroke uh, street bikes and smaller displacement four-stroke stuff. So they really wanted to, 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 you know, get the attention of the Brits and the American manufacturers. So 1966, Kawasaki came out with its W1, which was a 624cc, I believe, parallel twin powered street bike. It's the bike that this bike is based off of. And uh, that bike had, had much success. It was actually modeled after BSA's motorcycle from that time. So it had very similar styling, had a big displacement parallel twin, uh, had the reliability and durability that, that, that Japanese manufacturers are known for and instead of having to work on it all the time you could actually ride it. So that was a big deal for Kawasaki back then. Over the next couple years through the late 60s early 70s Kawasaki made a couple different versions of its W1. It had a scrambler version, a TT version, so a bunch of little spin-off models. And it did very well with that motorcycle. It was actually the motorcycle that that led into the, the development of the Z1. And uh, we all know the story of the Z1. That was Kawasaki's hot rod from the 70s. So 
so here we are on the 2019 W800. Kawasaki actually had this bike or the, a version of this bike for sale in Europe for a few years. They recently retired it and they overhauled it and now they've released it into America just because the United States is so hot to trot in the retro bike segment. So for 2019, we've got this bike. It costs $9,800. It's powered by a 776cc. I think it's 776, 773 or 776 cc. Parallel twin with an overhead cam design. And it's got this really cool overhead cam configuration. So instead of a conventional cam chain, it's got this bevel design where an actual gear turns the camshaft. And it's got this nice, pretty shaft that runs along the starboard side of the engine. And really, the whole point of it is just so it looks cool. Just so it looks cool and sounds cool. There's no performance advantage, no weight savings advantage. It's purely aesthetic for aesthetics and sound. Speaking of sound, the engine that powers this motorcycle, God, it delivers such a wonderful sound. Very, very nice rumble to it. Here in the lower part of the uh, power band, below 4,000 RPMs, it, the engine's got a little bit of vibration. You definitely feel it through the handlebar. You feel it through the foot, peg, foot pegs. And, you know, for some it might be a little bit much. But to me, it just makes you kind of remember what ride one of these old bikes would probably be like. I like it. You get the engine revving, revved up past 4,000 RPM and the vibration dissipates quite quickly. And there's a lot of torque on tap. Upwards of 40 foot-pound torque is available from just over 2,500 RPM. So from 2,500 RPM to 6,000 RPM, you have over 40 foot-pound of torque. Guys, we're here in Southern California, so we can split tra traffic legally here. All right, here we come. Big corner. Let's see how she handles. Ooh, she's a little bouncy. She's a little bouncy, guys. She also drinks the foot pegs pretty easy. The rest of the powertrain is complemented by a five-speed manual transmission cable actuated clutch inside the clutch mechanism it has slipper functionality so if you downshift in too low of a gear for the speed you're traveling the rear tire won't skid nice feature I like the clutch actuation it's got a very light pull another nice touch about the clutch lever is the clutch lever position adjustment you can move the lever forward or aft based on the size of your hands I have it in setting three right now. I like that very much. The front brake lever also has adjustment, four position adjustment. I have the lever in position four, which means it's closest to the handlebar. I have smaller hands and I like to be able to grab the brake very easily without having to reach. So that's why I like that position four. Instrumentation, very, very pretty, very tasteful. Two analog gauges, speedometer, tachometer, various warning lights. We've got a trip function too. No fuel tank, or I'm sorry, no fuel gauge. So you're not gonna be able to keep tabs on the capacity of the four gallon tank. You're gonna have to do it manual style, but I think we can live with that. No gear position indicator either, but again, considering the retro spear of this motorcycle, I think we can hang. On our dyno, this motorcycle made, I think about 46 horsepower. 46 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, so it's got pretty decent performance for 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 a bike that only makes 46 horsepower. Jumps off the line pretty good. Got a 41 millimeter diameter fork, pair of preload adjustable only shocks, and the ride on this motorcycle is very supple. Very supple. It's a little bouncy. Actually, it's pretty bouncy. There's not a lot of rebound damping 
in the fork of the shock. You hit some bumps and she'll start oscillating and, and bouncing around a little bit. But it's not the kind of oscillation you'd get from one of those old school frames. You know, this frame's been redesigned. It's a little bit stronger and more robust up to the, the challenges that the extra power of this engine has. So the oscillation that this bike has that you notice when we were going through that right corner, it's all pretty much from the suspension. But again, this bike isn't made for ripping. It's made for cruising around and looking cool. Riding position really complements the overall feel of this motorcycle. It's, it's a fairly sporty for a, for a vintage style motorcycle. This Clubman, Clubman handlebar, it's got a relatively low mount. You're positioned in a very forward, almost kind of racy uh, contour. The foot pegs are not as low as you'd think. They're actually kind of high. But even though they're kind of high, still doesn't have super high ground clearance. You'll feel, you'll feel those pegs touch down even at moderate lean. But it's a decently comfortable bike. I really like the saddle on it. If you look at the seat up close, you can see the attention to detail Kawasaki made on this bike. They didn't just simply go into the parts bin from 1966 and make some new parts. They, they were very meticulous about the fabrics and the materials they use. And it's a very, very well put together motorcycle. A lot of other manufacturers, you know, mid-grade motorcycles aren't made in Japan anymore. But this W800 is made in Japan. And I think that's cool. Throttle response is very crisp. Very accurate. I know the Z900 RS has a little bit of a not the most refi refined throttle response. So it's good to see that this parallel twin does. I love how it grumbles off the line like that. It feels like a triumph. She rips, man. She comes off the line real good. Transmission has real positive shifts between each of the five cogs. I like the width of this fuel tank. It's really easy to squeeze with my, with my knees. You know, when you squeeze the fuel tank with your knees, it just gives you a added degree of stability when you're braking or accelerating. I like that. Of course, this motorcycle comes equipped with passenger foot pegs and the seat's extra long so you could bring a passenger and have a good time. Right at the speed limit guys, I know a lot of you guys are out there. Go faster, go slower, go faster, go slower. We're gonna follow the rules though. That's how we do it here at Motorcyclist. This windscreen doesn't do much of anything besides look cool. This bike isn't, doesn't have a very big cocoon to, per, to keep you out of the elements. You wouldn't really want to ride across the desert on this bike or in the rain. But for skating around town, it does just fine. I wouldn't say this bike is a huge bike, nor would I say it's a very small bike. It's very well proportioned. On the scales, it weighs 490 pounds, so it's definitely sizable. This thing is not light. But it still changes directions fairly well and an easy motorcycle to ride despite its, its 490 pound um, weight with, with gas. Hop on to MotorcyclistOnline.com and search W800 Cafe First Look. And you'll see a little technical preview about this motorcycle. This thing rolls on 18 inch wheels, disc brakes front and rear with ABS. So the original W1 didn't have any disc brakes. That was pre-disc brake time. So you will benefit from the nice stopping power and braking sensation of a modern set of hydraulic disc brakes with ABS. So if you get too, too heavy on the squeeze of the pedal or the lever, you'll be okay. You won't have to worry about the brake locking up. If you rode this thing for eight hours for a full day, I'd anticipate you'd be a little bit beat up. But that's the name of the game with these old school aggressively positioned cafe racer bikes. You know, they look cool and they sound cool, but they're not the most comfortable to ride. All right, another turn. 
I love turns. Ooh, she accelerates good through these turns. Sorry guys, I broke the speed limit for a second. It just felt so good to lean her in the turns. I hope you guys don't tell anyone on me. Again, a little bit of vibration at lower RPMs. Definitely feel it through every control surface. Get the engine spinning up around five though and she smoothens out very well. You still feel a little bit of a buzz, but it's more of a high frequency buzz. We talked about the fit and finish on this bike. It's very nice. There's a couple little things that maybe could be a little bit better the way the some of the wiring here, the tape on it, it's kind of a little bit chintzy, but not not bad, especially when you compare it to an old bike from the 60s and 70s. That's what these these remake motorcycles are all, are all about. They're for guys and girls that want that nostalgic motorcycle riding experience without all the BS. You know, you don't have to worry about having a oil leak on your garage floor. You don't have to worry about the thing not starting. You don't have to worry about the paint cracking on it. You don't have to be worried about the brakes not working, this out of adjustment, that out of adjustment. These bikes from Kawasaki are very durable machines. Very durable. Put gas in them and go. Maybe change the oil once in a while and you're dialed. Retro nostalgic motorcycle rider that wants that look, feel, experience of an old bike without any of the nonsense, gosh. These retro bikes like the W800 are fantastic. I really like how responsive this brake is. This front brake has really good sensitive feel. Really well calibrated. Like that. Suspension's a little bit too bouncy for my for me. I would definitely slow down the valving if I was in the R&D department on this bike, but for intended use it's just fine. We've ridden this motorcycle at night a little bit and the, the multi-chamber LED headlight is just, it's awesome. It is so bright. Really does a fantastic job of lighting up the road ahead. LED tail light helps you stand out in traffic. They love it. I hear that sound. All right, guys, we're almost to work here. We're gonna be doing our patented wheelie test and slide test. Then we're gonna answer some of your questions via Instagram. All right, guys, the wheelie test. Oh man, we got people in our way. Should we just wheelie over them? Thumbs up for that. No, just joking, guys, we wouldn't do that. What's up, girls? All right, man. Who's ready for the wheelie test? Let's do it. Oh, man, she don't want a wheelie. Oh, yeah, she totally does not want a wheelie. Oh, yeah, guys, she don't want a wheelie, man. I dropped her and she didn't go. We'll do it one more time just for GP. Yeah, she ain't wheeling. Sorry, guys, this bike does not wheelie. Will she back it in? I'll say no. Maybe uh, she would have backed in if the ABS wasn't there. So she almost backed in. So zero for wheelie and if we cut the ABS wire, she would have maybe backed in a little bit. Put this thing in the shade. The light's more even. All right, guys. Let's pull out the old internet machine. Talk to the interweb, see what's up. All right, questions. We got a couple questions here, guys. Let's start from the top. How does it compare to a Triumph? Asks Stephen Hoffa. Stephen Hoffa, thank you. That's a great, great question. Well, it compares very favorably to a modern Triumph. The engine feels very similar. It's got a similar sound. I would say that, you know, it's been a while since I've ridden a Thruxton R, a long while, so it's going to be really hard for me to compare, but I would say that this bike is a little bit more on the nostalgic side. Triumph has a lot of, you know, heritage nostalgia engineered in their bikes, 
but their bikes have a squeak more performance too. So I think all in all, the Triumph's gonna give you a little bit more performance than this bike. But if you're looking for that old school feel and look, you know, with modern reliability, but old school feel and look and handling, this bike's gonna be good for you. Great question. Is the heavy weight noticeable at low speeds? Asked V Volts. I wouldn't say so. 490 pounds with the full tank of gas, but it doesn't feel that heavy. The seat height's really low. It's a very, it's not a very big motorcycle, so it's easy to command. So despite its heavy weight on the spec sheet, I wouldn't say it's a heavy motorcycle at low speeds. Worth the price tag? Ah, that's a really good one. Good question. Is it worth its $9,700 asking price? I think that's around $1,500 less than the Z900 RS. I, I don't know. For me, $7,900 $9, for this motorcycle is a lot. It's, it's a cool bike. I would love to have one in my garage. I would love to ride this thing to the coffee bar in Corona Del Mar. To me, it's just, it's too much money for not enough bike. I can't do enough stuff on this bike. I can't do wheelies on it. I can't do slides on it. I can't endo it. I can't ride it off-road. Well, I probably could, but it wouldn't be the best on it. So for me, $9,800 is a little bit too much for this motorcycle, you know? But at the same time, if you're looking for, you know, think about it. Like, think about trying to find an old, 1966 W1 or W2 or W3, you know, finding a clean one with low miles that hasn't been molested. And then if it has been molested, you have to rebuild it and fix everything and source parts and blah, 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 blah. Think how much money that's going to cost you. It's going to cost you well over $10,000. So on that note, if you want that old bike, but don't want to mess around with any BS, $9,700 is a steal. I'm sorry, $9,800 is a steal. So there you go. Aaron Colton, my favorite friend Aaron Colton says, with the addition of the new front fairing, do you think that ride would be more enjoyable with an open face or a modular style helmet? Another great question. I'm wearing my motorcyclist showy RFSR GoPro edition helmet, so I'm wearing a full face helmet just for these MC commute reviews. But if I was riding just for fun, I would absolutely ride in an open face helmet. I would probably use Showy's J Cruise helmet because I love that thing so much. I love being able to have my head in the air like a dog and lap up all the air and motorcycle sound. I love that. Well, there you go, guys. That's enough questions for today's 2019 W800 MC Commute episode. Very nice bike from Kawasaki, as we mentioned in the Q&A section. I really like this motorcycle. I like the styling, I like the air fins, the bevel, uh, overhead camshaft actuation there's a gear there's gears in there unbelievable very cool very aesthetically pleasing motorcycle but i would not buy it it's just too much money for me and it doesn't do enough it's not versatile but it's still a very pretty motorcycle and i would love to have this thing in my garage actually i'd love to have it in my living room that's where i'd want this motorcycle in my living room well that's a wrap guys make sure to subscribe to us Motorcyclist Mag on YouTube. Hop on over to our website, MotorcyclistOnline.com. We don't have a review of this of this motorcycle yet, but maybe we will in the future. Additionally, maybe CycleWorld.com might have a review of this bike in the future. So hop on, log on to the interwebs, go to their website, and do a quick query, and maybe you'll find something. That's a wrap, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave us a comment, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.